Hey there, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at creating um, this effect that you can see on screen now. Uh, this tutorial is going to be, as you can see with the number of nodes we have on screen, a very beginner focused tutorial and I just wanted to take the chance to explore something a little bit different that's a little bit more simplistic but still has a very cool unique final end result um, and just see how people sort of respond to this. Um, so no connectors required, you can do this with a webcam, um, it's not intense on your computer so you can do it with relatively any computer. And um, as always, this project file with all the um, specific parameters that I've plugged in to get the look you just saw is available on my Patreon down below, just a few bucks a month and you get access to every tutorial I do on this um, channel. But yeah, today um, we're going to dive in. So what I'm going to do is keep this project file up here for reference, just so I can refer back to it. And then um, sort of bit by bit, I'm going to explain what is happening. Uh, and hopefully it should be an easy process to follow and not to be too complicated. So the first thing we need to do is get a video device in. Alternatively, you can get um, your connect if you're using a connect you can also get a movie file in or drag and drop a video file in um, but if you get this video device in and then set your webcam up like so um, I have a bunch plugged in uh, instead I'm going to just grab my connect from above like so but essentially you can do it as if we have this video device so we'll connect this to a null just so we can signify the starting point and then from there, what we're going to do is want to find a way to um, differentiate the movement. So the idea of the, the piece is that we um, keep everything in the surrounding completely still, but any sort of movement triggers the sort of effect. And if I were to get up and move around, you can see it will follow me. Um, and you might see it happen a little bit off to the side with some background movement. This doesn't work as well with, uh, say, a movie clip if I plug this one in. Um, you get a quite intense effect when you have quite a lot going on, which may be something you really like and you might want to explore uh, different parameters looking into, but I feel like this works best with just a static background. Okay, so the, first, the way we're going to detect the movement is by using a cache. So we can right click and get cache here um, by right clicking and on the output of this top. Sorry, I haven't recorded a video in a while, so I might be a little bit scrappy. Um, the next thing we need to do is press tab and get ourselves a cache select. Uh, and then what we want to do is drag this cache onto this. Essentially, when we're caching it, um, we're saying, hey, store this video for however long so in this instance um, 32 frames I believe this is frames so it's caching um, 32 frames and holding on to that information and then here with this node we can be like oh hey I want this information so for example if I do negative 5 this cache select is going to be 5 frames behind this one and in fact, I can go to this cache and just set that to be five here because we don't need 32. So there's no point in overcooking more than what we need. And then essentially what we're doing is we have such a small difference between the two. Um, but the only difference is slight movement, right? Because one frame is five frames ahead of the next. Um, and so when we have a static background like so, the only difference between the two here is the movement that is happening. And so we want to... Um, essentially capture that so what we can do is grab a composite from this tab here and then plug both of these into it uh, and then sort of as I've been hinting to we want to click operation and set it to be uh, difference you can see here when I stay very still versus moving you only see my movement like so and this is already like the magic of the effect. Um, essentially, we're going to use this layer to displace the original image um, with a few other video effects 
along the way. Um, before we do that, what we need to do is we need to sort of make this layer a little bit more um, identifiable. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in a level. And then um, on this level, we want to set the brightness up here to 2. Um, that's just, you know, brightening the images. Um, you can also play around with the contrast like so here if you want. Um, see how there's a lot of background movement happening there. Essentially, you just want to make sure that the um, with this not with this node that the still objects are very bright, and sorry, the the moving objects are very bright, and the still ones are practically invisible. Um, awesome. So the next thing we want to do is connect this to a chroma chroma key, and then we want to go to our value. This is going to be uh, now trying to separate the um, black background, so the complete stillness that we've crafted from the movement. So under, under the value tab here, um, you can do this trick on when you have a mice, we hold down your middle mouse button. And then if I move it up and down, we're holding down middle mouse, uh, we can hover over these values and that will allow us to increment very precisely. So if I hover over this one and then start moving my uh, cursor to the right again holding down middle mouse this entire time um, you can see that we can increase it by very small increments and also very large increments as well if we wanted to do that if you don't have a mouse um, I don't know what the shortcut is for this um, unfortunately but you can also just type in the exact values and play around with it uh, very quickly I'm going to connect in a null uh, let's bring this to the very end and then set it to our background with this blue button here just so we can see what we're doing. All right, so hovering over this, um, yeah, you can see here I just do a really low value and I'm already pretty much getting the effect I want here. I can see over here there's a little bit coming through so maybe I want to be a bit more harsh with this. Um, but if I wanted to I could also go back to the level and play around with the contrast and just make sure I'm getting like a the bulk of my movement still coming through at this point. Uh, and then from this point on, um, we have two options. So you can see up here, you can do an edge or a threshold. The difference between the two is essentially um, the edge you're gonna get more, it's, it's gonna highlight the edges of the images, whereas the threshold's gonna give you just a blank white pass. Um, personally for a blur, I want to create like a very watery sort of look so I feel like a threshold works better in this instance but you might want to try edge as well. So after our chroma uh, I'm going to insert a threshold like so and again this is we're essentially trying to achieve the same thing here where we want um, all of our movement coming through with a really nice threshold you can play with the soften as well if you want but just make sure you see here how the white the background starting to whiten we don't want that. Um, but so maybe a little bit of softening, maybe not. And I'm pretty happy with that threshold there. Again, I if you want to download the project file and get my exact um, parameters, you're more than welcome to. But um, it's really important that you just sort of like play around with these values, understand what it is that you are changing. Uh, so that way, when you want to sort of build out your own work, you can understand what you're doing with each of these nodes. Because um, it is a very confusing software, at, <laughs> at least at the start. Uh, so after this point, we then want to just soften the image a lot. So the way we're going to do that is by right-clicking the line and inserting a blur. Now, I did go a bit overboard up here with a blur, a really strong filter size. And in fact, you can go a lot bigger than that as if you want. Um, your filter size here, if I typed in a really big number, I don't have a lot going on on my computer right now. So obviously, this is f like not disrupting anything. Um, but a blur is a very deceivingly computationally intense perf um, sort of effect. So if you have a weaker computer, you might not want to do a massive filter size. Uh, in fact, you could do a big filter size here and then a pre-shrink. Uh, pre-shrink is basically just um, lowering the resolution of the images before you blur it. Uh, and you don't really notice the pre-shrink if you have quite a large blur because obviously you've blurred the image quite a bit. But if I make the pre-shrink too big, it's going to lose all resemblance of form. So 
don't try to make that too big but just sort of play around with values that you like until you sort of get a blurry ghost sort of outline like so um, again we still want to make sure we have a lot of the image coming in when we have movement so you might want to keep playing with these parameters but I shall press on uh, so next thing I did um, which is entirely up to you whether or not you want to do this is we can click this button up here and go to our palette and then I went to image filters and got a feedback edge um, so a feedback edge is a type of pre-made feedback which you can sort of see here when I move it um, creates a very nice expanding trail now we have a lot of parameters here that we can sort of control so I can plug that like that um, and what I think I will do is I'll leave the feedback edge as it is for now and wait till we you know plug in the final result and then sort of come back and tweak the parameters here because this is doing a lot in terms of um, adding a lot of flow but also some more jaggedy edges here that you might not want but maybe you do want but we'll wait until we have the final image to sort of understand that a little bit better. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is connect in a, another um, level. So this level, again, is just going to... Oh, we're just going... Oh, not plug in a limit. That would be a fun little thing. Um, crank the contrast up on this one. And this is just to, to make sure that we have a very strong, defined... Um, image going on here um, as well as a very hard cutoff because again this is going to be a displaced layer so the the actual look of this effect doesn't matter as much as the textures and the sort of like um, surrounding shape of it uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is connect in our slope with our displace so before we do that let's go ahead and grab a select uh, and with a select we can drag our original video device in or my other select here or we can even do the null and drag and drop it and it'll create this dotted line which allows us to reuse or reference this node later in the network um, keeping everything a little bit clean so another thing I added in was a time machine um, so time machines are really cool effect that I've explored a few times in this channel and we can connect it from here and you'll see Tima pops up. Now, um, Time Machine sort of works in a similar way with the cache where we will make this uh, first row here, we'll insert a texture 3D, and you see here it is caching the image as I move my hand up and down. And then with, with the second input, we're saying, hey, distort those changes against said input very quick way to easily understand this is if I grab a ramp you can see we have a fade from left to right like so and if I plug in my teamer you can sort of see there that the displacement is happening in that like horizontal jaggedy kind of way and in fact if I uh, do this and make the period really you can see there the solid lines and how it's being displaced from white to black across that movement um, so that is a really cool look in itself but um, another way that a lot of people like to use Tima which I quite like is by actually plugging the original source image in and when we do that we get like just a unique sort of displacement based on the image uh, itself uh, and then when we combine that with a, another displace we get that sort of like glass look leading versus, uh, with the sort of delayed Tima combined together so from this teamer, um, if you want to play around with uh, the different offsets, you can do so here. You can also increase the cache size in this texture 3D uh, for a more of a delayed, staggered look. Uh, but aside from that, from this teamer, if we want to then connect in a displace, uh, and then we need to um, plug in our level. So normally we want to do a slope, but I'll show you what that looks like before we do that so let's plug in our level like so um, you can see here when we move around we just get a completely distorted image even if we um, on the displace up here change this to repeat the displace that's happening is this very jaggedy awful looking thing so with a slope 
between the level and the displays. So insert. We can control the strength and make it a lot more of a softer um, displace layer. Uh, you can see very gently there. And that's pretty much saying, hey, um, displace it on these RGB levels that we're passing in. Um, and I'll keep it at strength one just for now. And then you can see pretty much that's it. We pretty much have the look as intended. Uh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and we've banged out a 15 minute tutorial. So if that was um, enough for you guys, then uh, awesome. But what we'll do now is look at uh, the feedback edge and some Tima, just if you want to explore some other different ideas. Um, so if I pull up the displace layer and then for example go into our feedback edge and make the scale really high you can see now we have it like sort of bleeding forward maybe you don't like that maybe you want to make the feedback be very blurred like that where it's much more of a ghostly sort of image um, maybe you don't like the edge strength um, creating that sort of like red layer that you could see just before when I move around so we can get rid of that. We could also make the scale exactly one so it sticks to the exact same shape as our body. Or maybe you want to make the scale slightly bigger so it does have that sort of like ghosty look. Play around. <laughs> same with the slope. Uh, if you make this a lot stronger, you can see the indentation on the image becomes a lot stronger if that makes sense. Um, but you can also make it lighter if you want it to be way more subtle. And then again with the Tima, maybe you don't like the fact that um, you can see here that the glass displacement is the one leading me um, because obviously that's the um, delay here. <laughs> so I just keep having to look at my like, weird freeze frames of myself and it completely throws me off. Um, uh, if you don't like that leading uh, but you still want to have a bit of a time delay well firstly you can get rid of the time delay entirely and just plug it in like this i thought this was a bit boring for a, just a video in itself um which is why i added in this team but you could also just um actually if we could do Control x and then go back to i don't know like like uh maybe even like here like just after this null um, we have the dotted line shooting off. We can paste in and plug in the um, null into our time machine, like so, and then plug our time machine into our cache. You get a very delayed ghost instead, uh, and then you could even combine the two together and have a sort of matched... Um, displacement happening at the same time but it's all sort of like sta staggered and delayed but yeah um that's it for today's video i hope this was interesting um obviously i've done a few community surveys and talked to a lot of people on what they want to learn and it's always blob tracking and audio reactive effects uh so i would love to hear some feedback on this um whether you guys found this interesting or not i've been really inspired by some of um triple p panics earlier content where they were very explorative of different sorts of abilities and techniques that you can do in touch designer and in very simple ways like not having to dive into the you know the deep end of um rendering and instancing and everything so would love to know um what you guys think what direction you want me to go in whether we want to sort of deepen knowledge around a specific topic or if we want to keep exploring different cool effects like this one which is very accessible but yeah let me know what you think uh this project file along with everything else is available for download on my patreon below uh and i will see you guys hopefully soon i will hopefully be cranking out a bit more very shortly peace